From New York, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back. We're live here in New York. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services Summit 2018, AWS have taken over the cloud. I'm Jeff Horry, Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Ben Lingwood, CTO of Lemongrass, um, doing SAP on AWS exclusively as part of your company. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, thank you for having me. So I heard rumors many, many years ago at SAP Sapphire that uh, you know, SAP had the cloud going at that time, trying to get it going, that a lot of their pre-sales were being done on Amazon. And, and one of the internal SAP guys said to me, he's like, damn, this Amazon thing is pretty damn good for SAP sales. Yeah. And it really was an organic shadow IT pre-sales thing. Yeah, so now yeah, yeah. there's a lot of business, SAP's multi-cloud, you handle the AWS. How has the cloud changed SAP? And it's, it's been a real revolution in the way that SAP is, is run and operate. And if you traditionally look at SAP, it's normally been quite a monolithic system. It's been the system that's, that's been always on. Uh, it's a system that you don't touch because it's running your core finance, your core system. So, what the cloud has enabled is really agility into that system. The world of DevOps, so not maintaining huge amounts of infrastructure that you don't need all the time for projects and for sandboxes and for, for those type of environments, gives you the flexibility to use what you need when you need, give that utility modeling uh, experience with both billing and, and, and compute. And then, and then lastly, it gives you that flexibility so that you can adopt new SAP technology that much quicker as well. Can you give some examples of some customers that have been successful with the cloud? And what's been the secret formula? What's been, what's been the success linkage to make SAP more agile, more versatile, more performant? Yeah, let me, let me give you a couple of examples. So uh, we've just done one project for a very large beer company, right, uh, that have gone live. Uh, and that was really around the DevOps experience. So this was an organization that had significant footprint of non-production systems, sandboxes and project systems, and all the other systems that you collect through running large projects for large businesses, uh, and keeping those on all of the time. So what happened with this project in particular was we got rid of them. Why do you need to maintain all of those systems when you're only using them for a few months of the year, or you're not using them over the weekend, or your, your project team are going home at five o'clock and you don't need them overnight? So by bringing in that DevOps culture, putting in the technology, and, and what we do is we bring in the, the best of AWS automation technology with SAP best practice and SAP architecture, and that allows the customer to build systems when they need them, on demand, you know, within, within hours of actually when they need to use them, and then when they're not using them, turn them off. So, Ben, this sounds so, it sounds so oil and water here to people that are familiar with what yeah. you do, right? You think of SAP, you think long implementation cycles, a lot of integration, and then like you said, you build it, you lock it down, and the yeah. thing, just run. So I'm curious, from, from your client's point of view, you know, what is the, the kind of twinkle in their eye to see that they can both use this hardcore, super important production system, but still start to get some agility out of this AWS cloud. They must be like, Ben, how the heck are we going to put these two things together? Yeah. So how do they yeah. start generally? They're obviously not lifting, shifting their whole yeah. manufacturing system and sticking in AWS, are there? kind of pieces and best practices that enable them to use the two together well? So, so absolutely, so the first, first part of your question is absolutely designed to be a hybrid cloud, right? So the, what runs in Amazon is an extension of what's on premise, no problem at all. And you tend to find there's a big, big ecosystem of, of connections, of interfaces, so the good news is those can continue to run exactly the same way they do today, so great from a disruption perspective. Well you tend to find where customers are looking at Amazon, it's a compelling reason. So, I need to buy new hardware. I need to get out of a data center. I've heard about this, this cloud organization. My cost of running my SAP system is significant. I'm spending, it's not, not uncommon for them to be spending 60, 70% of their budget on keeping the lights on, right? Patching and maintaining and all, all those back office things that just consume huge amounts of time, huge amounts of money, and stops companies being able to do agile developments. So bring it into as Amazon, and what we specialize in is automation first. So we can automate patching the system, we can automate operating system patchings, we can do disaster recovery with a mouse click, I can extend a system in a mouse click. So those sorts of things that were typically taking weeks and weeks and weeks and slowing organizations down a result, that tends to be the, the, the golden bullet that really drives <laughs> the discussion there. What's right. the engagement life cycle look like? I mean, obviously speed is critical. Yeah. We're hearing projects, whether it's, I've heard public sector projects that ABS is running, where you know, years to weeks, 
we heard earlier today, financial services, three months, 18 months previously, yeah. years before yeah. that, so years, months, weeks. Yeah. What do some of the deployments look like for you guys in uh, these large SAP environments? Are they scoping it time-wise? It, it all depends on, on the size of the share. What we like to do is, right, put our money where our mouth is, right? So we, we like to run a proof of concept to go, right, what concerns you? What hurts you? What are your pr problems in your IT estate? Okay, okay, let's take that and let's do a proof of concept. And what we want to do is we want to do that inside a month. We want to prove that inside point. Inside a month. Inside a month. They must be just rolling their eyes when yeah. you say that for an SAP project. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> when you think of the world of Amazon, uh, a server is a line of code, right? I don't have to buy a system, rack it, stack it, install it, get the specialist guys in, get yeah. the security, so it's automated, right? So, uh, a line of They're not used to that. Years ago, it's like, we're going to milk you for like tons of cash uh, over know, multi, we're going to take eight weeks to do an audit. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what? That's a very important point because actually, the cultural change is as much of a challenge as everything because it's the, the thing that was the slowest moving component in the ecosystem is now the fastest moving. And you know what? Customers are not ready for that. So the governance change of, hang on, I don't need to buy a server and depreciate it for five years, I can be billed by the minute. How do I do that? What's yeah. the biggest learnings that you've learned as an individual in the industry? Not so much as with lemongrass, maybe that could help uh, give some color commentary. If you, know, you look back at the past five, 10 years, even just the past five, what's the big learnings that you've personally walked away with the cloud? What's the big impact? What's the aha? Where have you seen um, surprises, unexpected, expected things? What's, what's your big takeaway? I think that the big takeaway is not viewing the cloud as infrastructure as a service, not viewing it just as, just as another way of getting effectively dumped in, right? Uh, the, the cloud is way more than that. So, so yes, it fixes the problem of instant infrastructure. Uh, but don't, for God's sake, don't treat it just as, as just dumb infrastructure and, and comparing that with how much does it cost to buy a server. Yeah, you're missing the point completely. What, what companies should be looking at is what, what agility does an Amazon-based system, a cloud-based system give me it on top that allows me then to drive the efficiencies across the ecosystem. Because, like I said, the, the, main, the main cost of running these systems tends to be the maintenance, the operations, the patching, the infrastructure. So that's, that's the key thing I would say. Why should industry. customers work with you? What, how, what attracts um, people to your business? Obviously SAP on Amazon, obviously yeah. agility. Is it because they want to actually create a developer capability? Is it serve existing developers? Yeah. Is it more functionality? What are the main reasons that you're engaged by these com big companies? We're very simple people. And I mean that, I mean that in a very good way in that <laughs> we only do one thing and we do one thing well, which is we do SAP on Amazon. So uh, most of us in the organization, myself included, we are over 20 years working in the SAP ecosystem. Uh, and you're taking that, that, that dark art, that, you know, that it's a very complex set of applications and infrastructures and you know, a, a lot of moving innovation within SAP, and you're taking that with Amazon, which again, as we all know, every time you blink, Amazon are bringing something new. I mean, look behind me, yeah, there's, a, right. there's a huge ecosystem, a huge dynamo of uh, things that are just being released as, as you know, behind us right now. So new capabilities are benefits. Bringing those together. So the customers benefit, really, in their mind's eye yeah. is, okay, I don't want to throw away SAP because I have so much invested yeah. in it. It's like plumbing. Yeah. It's like pipes in the ground, yeah, yeah. right? They want to take advantage of new cloud native things. Is that the real, the goal? It's bringing those two dark arts together. So, so Lemongrass brings together those, those two best practices and forms that together into automated, repeatable architecture, best practices, uh, and then really where we see things that customers are doing repetitively over and over again. We automate first, that's our strategy. We automate first, right. that's what we do. And what's the business outlook look like in terms of trend data? Is it like more faster accelerated clients are moving over? How would you look at the growth of that uh, SAP on AWS? It's happening more or less often, more often? Growth, what can you share? Pro prolifically, some? I mean I had a major go live this weekend right in the US, so just, just an example and that, that happened comfortably under the time that we estimated before. So I, I think the ice is broken. People are now not scared of using what they see as public cloud services to run their, their, their crown jewels, their enterprise applications. So the confidence is in the marketplace people are now realizing it's probably more secure and more sophisticated than anything they could do on premise. Okay, so don't try and keep up with it. Uh, adopt it, embrace it. Uh, and then the third thing I think when you're, when you're focusing on, on, the, on the why Amazon on the uh, agenda there is the speed of innovation. So only a few months ago in Sapphire, uh, they released the new X2 series, you know, so looking at those very large uh, capabilities as well. So the, the 9, 12, 20 terabyte maybe in the future tire system. So the enterprise scale is also there. Right. I'm just curious as you, as you looked around at the ecosystem here, and the, the Amazon shows are amazing. I mean, not only is there a lot of booths, there's a lot of people right, <laughs> at every right. booth. 
Is that a way, is, is what you do a way for, you know, to, to leverage this ecosystem? Obviously Sapphire is a huge show, been around forever, very yeah, successful. Yeah. SAP's got a great ecosystem. But this is a different ecosystem, different vibe, different speed, yeah. different applications. Are you being able to blend kind of this AWS ecosystem and innovation into this core infrastructure great SAP? Question. Great question. So you tend to find with SAP, that it comes, you know, it's the hub maybe, but there's a whole peripheral set of IT solutions out there. So, absolutely right. So let me give you an example of that. So, data lakes. SAP typically runs very large data systems, right? Um, and what Amazon gives you capability to do is, is potentially in that space, take that data out into S3, you know, looking at Lambda, looking at, you know, uh, SageMaker, other automated technologies like that where you can actually natively run big data transformation for SAP data and non-SAP data. So if, if, you're, if you're a betting man and you want to put your enterprise into a, an innovative space that covers not only SAP, but any other IT area that you could possibly think of, there's a whole disruptive technology booth set behind us right, that are right. churning out some really amazing things. Yeah, that's yeah? great. What's the biggest uh, um, success that you could point to that you're most proud of with deployments you've done? I think that the, the things that we're most proud of is what we bring with automation. So basically what, what we're doing now in the company was, was my job, what I used to do only 10 years ago, right? I've, I've made myself redundant from, from 10 years ago. So bringing that level of automation now where you can build an SAP system in a mouse click or I can ask Alexa to build it yeah. for me. You know, we've got rat running out the booth, right? Who thought that? So you can ask a, Alexa. I don't, know that's a good <laughs> I don't know if I want Alexa. That's like, you know, go get me something at the grocery store and it buys Whole Foods. I don't know if I... I Alexa, buy that. SAP. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, don't ask that one. Um, <laughs> extreme example, but that, that level of automation now, right, uh, right. that's working, that's live. Customers are using that yeah. sort of functionality, which only five, six years ago would have been a hand crank solution. So it's a huge, huge acceleration. Well, we have covered SAP in the past. We really haven't been engaging with the, the core corporate team much recently. Um, I think we were at Sapphire through NetApp recently, but yeah. I can tell you that the one, one group that we do like at SAP is Dan Lal's group, and they're managing the SAP cloud platform. So they had some HANA cloud platform, some weird, weird bad naming going on and yeah. confusing. Yeah. But there's a multi-cloud initiative that I think is quite brilliant for SAP, and yeah. I think that yeah. they're not trying to be at Oracle. Yeah. Oracle saying, yeah. we have the cloud, come here. I think Oracle, we'll see how that turns out. I think SAP is playing, is playing it smart. They're going to be embedded in as a service layer across all clouds exactly. and let their ecosystem take advantage of it. Do you see it the same way? Is that kind of the strategy? Ab absolutely right, yeah. So, I mean, to, to, to survive, and, and SAP is super smart on that, is, you know, there was a race to see who could do the, the best and fastest uh, infrastructure on the planet, and you know, there's the big three players, and Amazon are absolutely upfront on that, uh, that can provide those sorts of services. So absolutely, it allows SAP to focus on what they do best, which is, world-class enterprise software. Yeah, right. And give their customers headroom. VMware did a deal with AWS, I thought that was a great yeah. tell sign yeah. to your point about there's a lot of cloud goodness out there. If you try to keep it monolithic, exactly it's right. a dying strategy. Yeah. And it's symbiotic, so you mentioned SCP earlier. Guess what, they're deploying that in Amazon yeah. as well. So the, the ecosystem is revolving around these, these hyperscaler platforms. And the, speed is, and the speed and benefits are just, again, off the charts. Economics are just driving prices down, functionality up, new roles of data, yeah. um, just cost conversion, just massive benefits. And you touched on a good point there, so economy. So what we do is we sit with every customer every month, and I can pretty much guarantee every month I can find an efficiency. Right, so yeah. something new's come out. There's a cheaper way of doing it. You've bought out a new range of, of service from Amazon yeah. that we can adopt. So every month we're seeing that innovation and we can pass that straight back to the customer. Right. So the curve Soon. is always going down. And blockchain's right around the corner. It is indeed. <laughs> it is indeed. You, know you're, you know you're doing well when AI and blockchain are in the conversation. It's going to be a big, big uh, migration. It's a little bit hyped up right now, as you know. <laughs> ben, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thanks for having Cube me. CUBE coverage here on the ground, talking to all the Amazon. Web Services Partners, Cube doing our part, broadcasting live. We're on twitch.tv slash siliconangle, as well as thecube.net, our site. Look for our community. Join the conversation. I'm John Furrier, Jeffrey. Stay with us for more live coverage here in New York City. We'll be right back. <laughs>